Five things every young adult needs to do in order to become financially independent. We're going to jump straight into this topic. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. In one of my videos last week, I promised to make a follow-up video this week about what every young adult needs to do in order to become financially independent. So that's this video right here. So number one, become financially stable. That is the most underrated thing, you know, that any young adult can do. It's something that we all like hear people say, I want to be financially stable, but what's the action? What is the blueprint to get there? Well, I gave you the blueprint. It's in my last video. It's the video titled five things every young adult needs to do in order to become financially stable. I made it last week. If you have not checked that out, check that out. I will link it up here and in the description. And the reason I put this is number one, and it's probably like a no brainer, especially if you've seen the last video, it's actually something that's not that easy to do. And it does take quite a bit of time to do because when I first started out, I was like, man, I feel like I'm kind of at the bottom. I feel like all these other adults are out doing me. Obviously they were like 10, 20 years older than me with much bigger savings account, which with much better cars, much better job titles, much better recognition around the company, all that stuff. Some of them had side hustles that were thriving. Some were doing like personal training on the side. Like I felt like I couldn't compete with them, but I didn't put two and two together back then. I didn't put together that I actually had to reach that threshold of being financially stable. I was just like, oh, I need to go from down here where I'm just getting started all the way to financially independent. It doesn't work that way. And so that's why I'm telling you, number one is getting financially stable. If you want to know how to get there, I made a whole video about it. Check that out if you have not already. But the one thing that is a key to that, that I want you to remember in this video is what I said about 401ks, how it's extremely important to start that off in your journey of becoming financially stable. That's going to be paramount in becoming financially independent. And I will tell you why in a second. So now we're going to jump to the second thing that you must do if you want to be financially independent as a young adult. You want to build a considerable savings account. What do I mean by that? I mean, when you're financially stable, you have it locked down to where, okay, this is how much I'm going to save every month. This is how much I'm going to automate every month. Cool. This is easy. This is how I'm going to do it. But it's going to take a, a long time for you to get to where it's considerable. A long time, maybe six months, 12 months, 18 months, three years. I mean, it just depends on what your time frame is looking like and what kind of money you consider to be considerable. No pun intended. But when I say this, I mean, you want to have a savings account that is solid. So you know how you have your checking and your savings. You want to have at least, I always say 2000 because Dave Ramsey always says you should have $1,000 saved. Uh, uh, You should minimum have 2000 in your main savings account, minimum. And then on top of that, you have your checking and that savings is only for emergencies. That is your precursor to your emergency fund. Your emergency fund, you should work to have anywhere between three to six months worth of paychecks in there. It's going to take a long time to get there now, but I'm telling you, it's going to give you peace of mind that you have never experienced before in your life. You could do three to six months worth of expenses, but most of us out earn our expenses. So I think it's safer to say, I'm going to save three to six months worth of paychecks in my emergency fund and just see how good you feel once you do that. Even once you get to one month worth of paychecks in your emergency fund, you're going to be feeling good. So imagine three to six of those, you're going to be feeling like you're on top of the world. And let's not forget, you still have $2,000 on top of that. The way my old mentor described this to me was this is your attitude insurance. If you don't have this kind of backing when it comes to money in everyday life, as stressful as life is, as stressful as work can be, as stressful as your relationship may be, or whatever it is that you're entering in right now in your life, life gets stressful at every single level. And you put pressure on yourself to perform at a certain level within every aspect of your life, including finances. But when you don't have your finances together, it's easy to feel out of control with every aspect of your life. Money is extremely important. I'm not going to say it's number one in life because it definitely isn't, but it's, it's definitely top five. And when you run out of control with that, you run out of opportunities and abilities to pay for certain things. And you don't want to feel out of control because when you feel out of control, that's going to pour into every bit of your life. When you're at work, you're going to be a little more nervous, a little more anxious, a little more on edge. You're not going to be as confident, even if you are good at what you do. 
that money aspect of it is going to hit you right in your mind. Hit somebody in their pockets, they also get hit in their mind. When it comes to bills, you're going to be like, man, I can't buy nothing because I'm spending all my money on bills. And that's why it's extremely important to be financially stable before you even think about being financially independent. So get those savings accounts together. That is your attitude insurance. You're gonna be a lot more confident. You see how I speak with conviction? This didn't just come from, you know what I'm talking about? I just woke up one day and was like this. Nah, like once you're an adult and you have financial responsibilities, if you don't get your money together, I promise you, your voice is gonna sound a little different. You may not have as much of an intense inflection in your voice. You may not have that depth in your voice and that confidence in your voice. I promise you. Because when I didn't have my money together, I was like, I was stumbling over my words a little bit. I ain't going to lie to you now. Whenever any slight mistake was made at work, I was sweating a little bit. I was like, oh, man, I hope they don't fire me for this. Please, Lord, don't let me go out like this. I'm dead serious. I'm making fun of it now, but it was a real thing. So get your savings together. That is the second part. This is going to be a big puzzle that we're putting together. So none of these things alone is going to get you financially independent, but all these things together will. So we're going to jump into the next thing right now. And that is to get yourself a side hustle. The first thing I realized about work was that you have an option to do overtime or you have the option to just do your regular shift. I took on this overtime and it would give me like an extra $1,000 a month, which was really cool, especially as a 21 year old, you're like, man, this is extra money for me to, to play with basically. That's how I looked at it. But at the same time, I also wondered, well, what could I do if it was me just working for myself? How much extra money a month could I generate for myself if I went into business for myself? So I gave it a shot. I did a side hustle. You probably heard the story a million times if you've been watching this channel for a while, but for those of you who haven't, um, basically I played drums all throughout high school all throughout college, right? And so I got really good at that. I was on the drum line in both scenarios. I played the tenors, the six drums, and uh, I was killing it. I was doing, brrr, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was putting some work in on them drums, making steam come off of them. But I was like, you know, I could help a lot of people who aspire to be on their college or even high school drum line, and I could charge a little fee, have parents come up, bring their kids, let me teach them, and, and that was that. So I did. I built a small business off of that. I was making between $200 and $250 extra per month. And the customers I had liked me, so they even gave me a tip to go with it. So it was pretty cool. But, you know, I, I enjoyed that way more than I enjoyed going to work on overtime. Because, first of all, when I worked on overtime, my time was set. That was a 12-hour day no matter what or at least an eight hour day. But when I was doing my own side thing, I controlled the time frame. I controlled when I began working and when I stopped working. So it felt a lot better. I didn't have to answer to nobody at the end of the day, except for myself, which was awesome. But I also say that to give you this point, you, you wanna create an opportunity for yourself to prove to yourself that you can actually create an income source of your own on your own. It's just another confidence thing, but it's also another money skill related thing too. Because part of personal finances is not just managing money, but it's also understanding how to make money out of nothing. I didn't spend any money on my business. I just made a quick thing on Craigslist. I already had the equipment for drumming at my place and I started teaching people. That was it. There was no money involved with that. And even though I didn't continue doing that, even though I got burned out with doing that and overtime because your boy was an overachiever, I had to do overtime and I had to do my own side hustle because I was serious about proving to myself that I could make my own money, which I did. But even though I didn't keep doing that, eventually I found something that I was passionate about. And it wasn't YouTube. It wasn't personal development. It was actually just educating people, period. But something that I thrive in educating people on is personal finances. It's the one thing that lights me up and gets me extremely fired up about everything. Every topic, everything. Every person I have a one-on-one -on -one call with, I get fired up because I know in real time I'm assisting someone on their financial journey. And that is a very special feeling. And that's grown. So it's grown into a YouTube channel, a website, a book, and I have a course that's about to come out that shows people how to invest in stocks. And I'm going to be letting y'all know when that launches. And I'm having another book that's going to be coming out. So like I'm working on a lot of different projects at the same time, but it's special to me. And I don't feel tired when I work on this stuff because 
I'm actually working on my passions and I'm working on things that I hold near and dear. And that has birthed multiple streams of income. So even though I make great money at my job, that's fantastic. But on my time off, I spend my days off working on my craft, working on my passion, working on my dreams and helping other people reach their goals. So it's not only something that gives me bigger pockets, but it's also something that I find fulfilling. And that's an extremely special thing. So the next thing is get yourself a Roth IRA. Here's why. Remember in my last video, I talked about the 401k, how important that was. It's extremely, extremely important. It's tax advantage. When the money goes in, it is not taxed. When the money comes out, it is taxed. That is how the 401k goes. But the Roth IRA is opposite. The money that goes into the Roth IRA is already taxed, but when it comes out, it's not taxed. So it's going to give you the best of both worlds. Your Roth IRA is going to give you even more flexibility than your 401k does because you can choose whatever you want to go in your Roth IRA. I made a specific video on Roth IRAs if you want to check that out, but it's extremely, extremely valuable to me. You, you can do up to $6,000 a year in your Roth IRA. Even if you can't do the full $6,000, put something in there. Even if it's just $100, $200 a month or something, that stuff is going to grow like crazy. And remember, when you take it out, it's not going to be taxed. So it's just another way to set yourself up for success when you do retire. And then in conjunction with this, having an individual account where it's just yours and you buy full securities and by securities i mean stocks bonds etfs because then what you're doing is you're dedicating a certain amount of your own money into an individual investing account and not only are you compounding on interest from your 401k and your Roth IRA but you're also compounding on it with your individual account of course you got to do your own research you got to figure out what to invest in. I've made videos about this in the past, but check this out. More investing videos are definitely coming. They're already in my content calendar, so now you just got to wait for me to post them. But I also have an investing course that's coming out too, so that's going to teach you even more in depth about investing. But I'm telling you, that can pay you crazy amounts of money. For one, some investments pay dividends, which is passive income that they pay you every quarter or so, depending on what the investment is, just for owning the investment. And keep in mind, your 401k and Roth IRA also pay dividends, but you get to see these because you probably don't open up your 401k every day to see where it's at. You, you just, you probably don't, but you get that plus you get the interest that your investment grows in. And some days you might look at your portfolio, you might see plus $300 today, plus $400, plus $1.2,000. And this is not with like $200,000 invested or anything. This is like with just like five figures invested. What I'm saying is I used to give into the myth that you have to have a substantial amount of money to put into the stock market right now. You need to have 35,000, 100,000, a million to put into the stock market right now if you're gonna see any good returns. That is complete BS. I've seen crazy good returns, but it's all in what you choose. I don't feel that it's appropriate to put all that stuff in this video, but I just want to tell you the framework. This is the framework and there's going to be follow-up videos that show you the how-to, but that's how you become financially independent. What I basically spent this whole video saying was make your own money outside of your main source of income. And what you're going to see that happens is sometimes the returns you get from these other investments may mimic or even exceed what you're making in your main source of income. And if you go heavy on a side hustle and you become passionate about it and it becomes like your business, then what could happen is that can start to mimic, rival, or exceed what you're making in your main source of income. You know what you can do with that extra money? Besides save it, you could also invest it. You could also use that as play money. You can do whatever you want with it. That's where the financial independence comes from. And it gives you that freedom and that peace of mind. Financial independence is nothing more than I am so good with money that I know how to make my own money outside of work. I know how to manage that money and I know how to put it into something else that makes even more money for myself. So you become very efficient at making your own money to the point where you're not, you are not going to be asking anybody for money, period. When it comes to bills, you're not going to be asking nobody for money. When it comes to food, 
you're not going to be asking nobody for money. If anything, people are going to be coming to you for money because of how good you are with it and because of how much you were able to amass just by following the simple strategy. Um, I wish I was taught this stuff in school. I wasn't. I was only taught part of the puzzle in school, and most of that was just save your money. And I did learn a tiny, tiny bit about investing, but that was about it. But this is the framework. Five simple things you can do after becoming financially stable. Once you become financially stable, you will further understand what I mean in this video about financial independence. And I promise you, apply everything I'm saying in this video. It's nothing that I haven't done before. I'm doing all this stuff. But I promise you, you will walk away with financial success. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. That is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.